Hey, the dog can stay. That's not a problem. No, no, no. She's going to try to eat the food, my Taco Bell. Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome to One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry podcast, where we talk about our food adventures and our favorite food groups. I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. And I'm Macho. And thank you for joining us. Hope you're doing all right. Hey, my chow, how's it going today? Doing well. I, you know, just another day going to work and coming home. Well, I, I think it's uh, you kind of sweetened it up a little bit by treating yourself on the way home, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna say yes. I've, I, <laughs> <laughs> that's the way I you want. If that's the way I want to put it, I guess I don't know if that makes sense to you. But nah, yeah, no, it definitely is. I love not sponsored Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> not yet sponsored. <laughs> ah, good call. Good call. Tell us don't a little bit. You can't keep. Yeah, but tell us a little bit what you're enjoying over there. I don't know. It's uh, it looked pretty um, good. I recently remembered I had the app. So, well, just in general, there's so many food apps now that I didn't realize I had. So I personally like Taco Bell a lot. So I was using the app like two weeks ago is when I remembered I had it, and just place an order from from the app, and then you get. And then you get, uh, what's it called? You just go through the drive through pick it up from there. You know, I was uh, saying earlier that, yeah, I don't, um, not as familiar, I guess, on, on the mechanisms to place the orders, um, or at least the, the way you could do that. So you place the order in the app, then you can drive up using the drive through And how do they know, like, what you're, who's picking up or whatever? Like, you show something? Uh, it depends on the app or, or, the, or the restaurant, I guess. Like, with the Taco Bell app, you type in your name and you just say your name at the, at the uh, what's it called? At the drive through in this drive-thru. case. Drive through. Okay. Yeah. You say your name? Yeah. Or whatever name you put, because you type in whatever name. But I'm wondering, like, how they up. identify, you know, if you have, like, similar names or, you know. Yeah, well, I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> oh, okay. Not your problem, huh? It's like whatever yeah, they give like you. When I, yeah, when I said Michael, they're like, oh, do you spell it M Y C N? Like, yep, Got it. that's the one. Okay. Okay. If, oh, if I, I see wonder somebody, if someone, someone else, else just, yeah, I wonder if someone else just like, they could say a name at random and there's maybe a small chance that that name might be there. And then they just t- <laughs> like, yeah, that's my order. And then they just drive off with it. I guess. Yeah. And it's very common. Like what's it called? You could do it with common names. Yeah, exactly. You know? And there's a good but, chance it might happen. <laughs> maybe, but that's very cynical of you. <laughs> sure. But not as cynical as I thought as uh, last week when you mentioned that um, weeps are terrible people. But uh, oh no, hundred percent. That is so true. <laughs> but so, you'll understand for those who listen to the last episode. Yeah, uh, I'm not quite sure. You can you can listen what for yourself and judge. Maybe weigh in on your for yourself, but maybe not all weebs, but many weebs. Okay, like as a whole, it seems like yeah. Oh, okay, so much stuff gets stolen at cons, man. Crazy. Yeah, it's kind of an eye opener, honestly, but. Um, I don't know. I wonder how that translates. Uh, I wonder if there's any overlap with people over there who also take orders from drive throughs <laughs> Yeah, I mean, who <laughs> what knows? if there is a correlation? <laughs> See, that's the thing, right? Now you've started a trend. This is all your fault. I know. Next time my order gets stolen from a, from a Taco Bell. It's like, yes, my name is spelled a M-Y-C-H. Yeah. You know, yeah, sure. Why not? Whatever. <laughs> I'm going to put a super like uh, obscure name that no one will ever guess. Exactly. Something with a... Uh, but- I mean, that is just a Taco Bell app. With the McDonald's app, you get, when you order, you get mm-hmm. the code, right? And yes. then you just, uh, you say the code in the drive-thru instead, so. Right, but you're not, I mean, that's when I'm placing the order, like, when I'm there. I don't, like, how do I, do they have, like, the pickup option as well, like, the drive-thru? Mm-hmm. Oh, you give the code yeah. then, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I can't believe I'm pretty behind on that. I mean, yeah, I. you of all people. I know. I mean, usually the, the admittedly the few times recently have been, it's, uh, you know, I just drive through, right. I don't place the order in advance. Just, but the deals, man, you're missing yeah, the, out deals. On the deals. I, I do look at the deals, I guess. Okay. And, and, and that, that is probably the only fast food app I, I am aware of that I have on here right now. And that's only because we've had it here for, for a while. Remember many, many yeah, years. Remember years past, um, it was that period of time when they had variations of, uh, of the big Mac, Yes, I uh, do remember that. Yeah, it was the the larger Grand Mac, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and what was it? The smaller one too. I don't, I don't know. I don't okay. know what they called the smaller one. I we call, never would order it. 
Maybe not. You're right. It was always the Grand Mac. Because I think there was this crazy like promotion, like it's a buy one, get one kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and so you get like two Grand Macs. <laughs> there was a time I, you had three for some reason. I remember we were with Patrick oh, at okay. McDonald's, uh-huh. McDonald's near his place. And you had you got the buy one, get one and then an extra one for some reason. I don't know. if Maybe someone else was, was some- with us. I don't know. Maybe by chance. I don't know. No, I doubt it. Because this was the time where you could use multiple deals. Like now, McDonald's only has used right. one deal per you can't transaction. Stack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But back then, you could stack them. And I just have a feeling someone was like, oh, you were like, okay, I'll get the buy one, get one. And then what? maybe there's like a 20% off a certain item or something like that. And you're like, all right. Those were the days. Yeah. I mean, there was a receipt you showed us. I don't remember what the order was, but you paid like a quarter for a full last <laughs> meal. <laughs> Take that inflation. That's great. <laughs> but and then McDonald's, uh, it's all your fault that they got wise to that. I think so. Oh, well, it was fun while it lasted. Um, but there are still some pretty good deals to be had on the app. Um, I mean, even uh, last week, it was like that National Fries Day or something. They're just giving away oh, yeah. fries or something. No purchase necessary. Uh, I you did kind of food holidays. I say that again. Don't you love food holidays? I, I, okay. I was just about to say that from, um, you know, previous, uh, episode we did with, uh, Jamie and Kat. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. But, what, but when it gets you free food, though. Sure. If it's there, I'll take it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I'm not seeking out, like, you know, what, what's the next food holiday? Don't keep a calendar admittedly of the different holidays of the, the different dishes of food. I don't know. I have no idea, but um, yeah, if there's free fries, I mean that, that was just going around the news cycle. So I just have to come. Yeah. That. For some yeah. reason out of all food holidays, like that was the one that got like most exposure. Yeah. Well, kind of going on a tangent though, but on, on uh, McDonald's and cause we, we haven't talked to each other a little, you know, like this in a while, but um, I know you tried the, uh, you know, that grimace, Grimace, uh, oh, birthday yeah, meal. The grimace steak. Yeah. Yeah. I had, uh, I had the chance to try it at least once myself. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, what did you think about it? I liked it. I did had you? it more than once because I liked it so oh, much. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was yeah, kind of a, kind of a bizarre campaign, you know, that totally, yeah. that McDonald's totally succeeded with. It's yeah, just, and it came out of nowhere. I know just this, uh, not obscure, but this kind of odd character from like 30 some years ago, you know, this big purple, not Barney <laughs> character. Uh, Apparently a taste bud. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Um, yeah, that's the lore. That's the lore. Okay. All right. So, yeah, this large, you know, round uh, taste bud like deal. Yeah. Comes out of nowhere. And actually, like, I heard, you know, I mean, I remember it, you know, growing up, like the character, you know, with the Hamburglar and, you know, and all that. But like, I love that. Yeah, I don't really know. I guess I don't really know the ba- a lot of the backstory, you know, to it. But yeah, I heard he was like kind of actually a mean kind of character. He had kind of oh, this really? mean attitude. Yeah. And so, which was kind of bizarre. But I think in this. A big ass purple blob. What do you I know, mean? I know. Well, when, when we kind of get into the, uh, you know, some of the viral uh, kind of trends that followed recently, I mean, maybe, maybe there's some truth <laughs> to it, so. you know? I guess so. Um, yeah. But uh, the, the meal itself is, was, you know, obviously what's, what centered around the meal was the, the shake, right? It's like this purple mm-hmm. berry flavored shake. Um, what did, what did you think about the meal overall? Like it was, I mean, I mean it was it. just a Big Mac meal, or, I mean, a, a Big Mac or a 10 piece chicken nugget right. meal. It's normal there. The only thing that made it special was the, was was the, the shake. shake. So yeah, which, it was a, to be fair, it was good. Okay, good. Yeah. I mean, I thought so too. What I had uh, come across, um, on the TikTok is that they were saying that, you know, to best enjoy it, uh, you kind of need to eat, you have to eat it in a certain order. You, you should eat like something like the fries first something salty um and then you follow it with the shake because well, you seem pretty <laughs> don't seem I pretty mean, convinced the same people who dip their damn fries in their ice cream you know in their soft serve well, i'm not a fan of that personally really is that right i hadn't i actually mm-hmm. did not realize that and what's yeah. the reason for that i don't know i don't well it's not that i'm not a fan i just don't get it i guess mm-hmm. i don't it doesn't elevate it in my opinion. It's okay. Just, 
but I don't know. Well, I think, um, well, to an argument, they're saying like, you know, whether this specifically or in general, it's like, you know, these, uh, these food scientists, right. Are these, you know, these people that McDonald's hires and pays to develop their menu and their food. It's like, they, of course they hired these people to like formulate the flavors and, you know, everything together and mm-hmm. the ingredients to make it addictive. Right. Um, and tasty and whatever. So, um, you know, uh, for them, for people to kind of, um, I guess, explain that you should eat something like the fries first, you have the saltiness and something to kind of activate those taste buds a little more to heighten them when you chase it with the, uh, with the shake, then it, it, it kind of brings out a little bit more of that, uh, with that berry, uh, berry flavor, mm-hmm. I guess. I mean, I tried it both ways and, uh, maybe the placebo in me, yeah, was convinced. <laughs> yeah. It's a okay. more, more berry like, um, oh, interesting. Yeah. But, uh, that's one data point. Um, but yeah, one large data point too. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's on like, uh, I only, I think I only had it once, but it's on like you enjoyed it. You had it, uh, you know, soon after. So that's pretty good. Yeah. I had it more than, more than once. I had it like maybe a few times cause McDonald's app, you get 20% off. That's the, that's a yeah, I saw, deal yeah, that was great. Yeah. When I ordered the but thing, again, it's I'll like, take it. mm-hmm. yeah, but, yeah. but as far as like the, the trends I was saying like earlier, like, um, you know, <laughs> it, it's kind of crazy. I, again, I had no idea until, you know, you know, the TikTok is like kind of showing me on my mm. feed, you know, all these kind of bizarre things that people were doing. Obviously we're like <laughs> yeah. a little late to disc- you know, to talk about this. True. I mean, this, it's long gone. People probably forgotten about this whole thing. Um, whether the meal itself or the trends or something, but, um, yeah, it was just kind of, it was just kind of funny to just kind of see, Oh yeah. You know, uh, especially, um, uh, you know, I'd say the kids or something to an extent, but like, you know, just people, yes, yes. just the people on TikTok. Well, not even just that, though. Like McDonald's itself had a great marketing campaign. They had Grimace take over the uh, all the McDonald's social media. Yeah. So it was a bunch of selfies of Grimace. It was great. Yeah. And then people memed off those memes, you know? Yeah, absolutely. He's a pretty odd character. Um, and then he even became, I guess, to an extent, the, the face of, uh, you know, LGBTQ, you know, kind of, oh, yeah. <laughs> which is, you know, it sort of makes sense. Maybe well, on, during pride month, you know? Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of things going on, right? A lot of timing and placement, um, again on McDonald's, you know, strategic marketing, I suppose, and whether or not they, uh, intended it that way, it's like, it just took off of a life yeah. of its own. So that's so cool. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, those videos were kind of, uh, interesting. <laughs> oh yeah. To say the least. Yes. I mean, yeah. To those, uh, who had no idea, um, it's like, you know, people are making these, uh, short form videos, na- uh, primarily on TikTok, where they try, where they're just kind of, um, casually trying to shake, like just, um, uh, and then they greet, you know, Grimace, happy birthday. And then you have this immediate cutscene to some horrific kind of um sequence of someone dying basically uh from the shake and it's pretty obvious <laughs> well i have to say that it's kind of a shame to waste all that that shake um you know but it's for the views i guess you know <laughs> <laughs> if it works it works you know yeah i don't know um i don't know if you like kind of saw that did you see that at any point like before during or like after like this whole thing i mean i wasn't actually i was i didn't know that there were videos, but mm-hmm. I saw a lot of the the, the picture memes of oh, people okay. editing like various uh, media instead yeah. of like instead of tears of blood, it was purple tears from the green yeah. shake or something. Yeah. yeah, it's like the the aftermath, some aftermath, yeah. Yeah. some some form of uh, I don't know, lack of a better word, excretions. <laughs> I guess I yeah, have no sure. idea, but you know of. Of the uh, of the grimace, so it's uh, it is bizarre. I'm sure those videos are still floating out there. It's just that the algorithm is uh, not uh, not allowing mm-hmm. it to see those. So, but they're out there, um, and there are a few that do stand out. It's yeah, pretty crazy. But um, all that to say, yeah, happy birthday, grimace, and um, well, related, right? Exactly. But back to uh, you know pickup and and fast food orders, right? We were just. <laughs> Um, and back to particularly your, your Taco Bell. I mean, what, what's your go-to order over there? So the thing about this, 
on the on the menu, like if you're on drive through, I don't see the thing that I ordered, but mm-hmm. in the app, it's there. Like you just set like in the because they have their own version of deals or whatever. Yeah. And I guess it's just like the or it's a value menu, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. to be fair, actually kind of works out because they they have the five dollar box. It's still literally there at Got five dollars. Yeah. And Cause, I mean, I've had my share of, of that as well, but like what comes in the box? Well, in this one, you can, uh, it's, it's got a, a hard shell taco. It's got mm-hmm. a chalupa and, uh, five layer bean burrito and, uh, what is it? Cinnamon twists, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but you can swap some stuff out or if you pay a little extra, you can swap everything out for the other stuff. Okay. But um, it's not $5. Yeah. They don't want to be $5. But like the thing is on the like the drive through menu, I don't see this ever, mm-hmm. but I always see the $10 box that they're promoting because it's the higher value box or whatever. Is it, so with the $10, like it's like more stuff that comes with it or is it just like the similar just thing? More. Just like. I, I guess more of their higher end items, if you will. OK, uh, like it's got the uh, Doritos Locos Taco. It's got whatever their featured item is. Uh, I don't know what it is right now. I think the volcano chalupa thing. Um, It also has a a five layer burrito and Mm -hmm. something else. Oh, the, it used to like chips and, and nacho cheese. And that comes with the drink too. Yes. Okay. Um, And what are you getting for your drink? Uh, Well, usually because I don't sleep well, I got the cinnamon ice, cinnamon ice coffee. Oh, wow. Okay. It's really sweet and I really like it instead because I'm not expecting coffee, coffee. I just want something sweet with my meal. I gotcha. Looks like someone else wants something sweet there too. No, she wants the beef that's in this box. Oh. She wants the meat. (laughs) I know her. Where's the beef? Yeah. (laughs) Nice. Um, But yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, no, I, shoot. Yeah, I haven't had a taco bell thing in a long time um, i also have the chipotle app yeah i use it but i don't really i have an accrued enough points for any discounts or whatever mm. same thing with this with the taco bell app too actually i don't think about it i don't know what the actual rewards would be because everyone offers rewards right 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 um i don't know i'll have maybe we'll have to we'll follow up we'll follow up <laughs> once, uh, once i get enough points for these i will mm-hmm. i'll tell Report. you Please report back our Taco Bell correspondent. Um, Hell yeah. Nice. If only we were here, she'd be agreeing with me. She also loves Taco Bell. Okay, cool. And is a big uh, big fan of the Mexican pizza, apparently. I don't know. Oh, wow. Yeah, they only recently kind of brought that back. So yeah. I'm, I bet she was happy about that. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole saga with the Mexican pizza, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, certainly. But, um, nice. So... Yeah, what else? Uh, Taco Bell aside, other fast food. Um, what else have you been up to? I mean, since last week, I haven't really done much, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, I did watch what is it, Into the Woods last night, though. So that was nice. Oh wow, cool. um, that's a fun musical. It is, I will say. Uh, this I've watched it before when it was L- in L.A. It mm-hmm. was a, a much smaller production. Um, still at uh, the Amazon Theater, but like it was more. I don't know. It was it was like, like not a Broadway production like this one is, because this is they brought the Broadway revival to L.A. Okay. And, okay. And uh, it's a lot funnier than the other one I saw. I mean, they they were both funny, but they like played up the comedy a lot more in this one. I see. Okay. Which is great, and the music, of course, was amazing. Okay. Because you know Stephen Sondheim. Um, but yeah, and. It's uh, we had seats in the rear of the mezzanine, which are still pretty good, honestly. Mm. Like you could, we could see everything, maybe not facial expressions as much, but like we could see the whole stage, and it wasn't too far, kind of thing. Okay, um, just give the people an idea, like a quick, you know, uh, synopsis of like of uh, this music. It's it's like the non Disney version of grim fairy tales, <laughs> okay. uh, interacting with each other in the woods. Um, okay. If anyone saw the movie, it's it's better than the movie i'm um, sure mm-hmm. it's got a baker and his wife it's got rapunzel it's got uh what is it a red riding hood she's a main uh, a big character there jack and the beanstalk yeah. he's he's a main character cinderella um prince charming's uh, a witch and uh, i guess an evil witch technically yeah 
Yeah, and it's just interacting on the baker and wife can't. Uh, they can't have a kid because the witch cursed their family for a reason, and they're to fix it. They have to go into the woods to collect ingredients from the other characters, basically. I see. I see. But it is more kind of like, um, you know, uh, almost like a parody. I think of like fairy tales and that kind of storytelling in general. Maybe not a parody, but more of actually what their original their source material is. Mm. You know, because you know how fairy tales are dark as hell. At least the grim ones are. Yeah. Um, the brothers, the Grim Brothers ones mm-hmm. are or whatever. Mm-hmm. Before Disney took their, basically transformed the whole fairy tale uh, meta, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah. So, so it, okay. it's more in line with what how they were originally written. Gotcha. So a lot of death, a lot of sad stuff happening to everybody. That's more in the in the end, but it's still you know it's somber but hilarious. Mm. Okay. Um, how long is, uh, how long does that go for? Uh, July 30th is the last, uh, last showing. Okay, cool. And where are they showing it again? At the Amundsen Theater in downtown LA. Gotcha. Neat. Yeah, I, um, definitely heard a lot of good things about, about this one. Definitely certainly a popular, uh, musical. Have you ever listened to the soundtrack? I have. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, it's good. Both uh, the original and, uh, you know, the whatever. The, oh, the movie? Well, not the movie. The um, oh. recast or the oh, okay. revival is yeah. what it is. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Not oh, nice. Right. So, yeah, it's a fun, it sounds like a fun one for sure. So, cool. All right. Definitely. Good. Glad you tried it. Um, yeah. Nice. What are you going to do? Um, well, eating as usual. As expected. But I will say, um, uh, one of those uh, one of those excursions was preceded by a non eating activity. Um, Did you in go fact, to the in as a matter of fact, yes. Oh hey, look at you! Right. Yeah, but I don't. I forgot you do those. Well, it wasn't my idea. I'll tell you that. Uh, it never is. <laughs> no. But uh, I did uh, meet up with some friends uh, previously, uh, recently, and we uh, okay. and we did um, meet up at at a, a trail um, in which is technically Griffith Park, but it's more on the kind of Hollywood Hills side, so the more west oh, okay. side of of that. So think Hollywood Hills, think the you know the Hollywood Reservoir, that that kind of side of it, um, mm-hmm. the side that goes towards the Hollywood sign. So so we. Um, met up at the trail over there and um, met up early so we can beat the, the heat. Mm-hmm. But um, pretty, pretty, you know, pretty good trail. Um, and got to see the, you know, the Bat back cave. of the, not, not quite. Not that one. Okay. Not this one. Yeah. This one um, is, uh, I think, is closer to or known as uh, this Holly Ridge Trail. Mm. I don't know. Okay. okay. Wow. It sounds like you're familiar with it. So. I mean that that specific, those specific hikes, yeah. Because you know, back at the time, they were really popular. Yeah, thankfully, I mean, the they, cave. certainly they still are. But uh, you know, thankfully, we didn't come across to. Uh, well, we'll just say we beat the rush, I guess, uh, in the early half. Yeah. So hope you stayed hydrated because it was still hot, even like it's by still 11 o'clock. still plenty hot, still plenty hot. But um, I will tell you that you know, afterwards, you know, rewarded ourselves. You know, with a nice view and, you know, the mm-hmm. back of the sign. But, um, you know, really the only motivator to really do any of that was what was to follow after, which of, of course, course, yeah, for, you, yes. for me. So we had um, we had breakfast after at uh, this mm-hmm. place, the Griddle Cafe. Oh, nice. Good. So that um, that's out in Hollywood and uh, mm-hmm. it's a well-known spot. Uh, breakfast place and um, probably yeah. m- one of the more notable things they have there are are these very large servings of giant pancakes. ass yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 sounds like you've had your share there which is great um, yeah it's good. it's good yeah I, oh yeah they have a lot of sweet options which sometimes is too much especially when they're that big so it is so huge I mean yeah we um there's a group of two maybe like four of four or five of us i want to say mm-hmm. there's five of us and uh we 
uh, ordered like two, we shared two orders of pancakes, different kinds. And then we each kind of had our own kind of main. Um, and so that was already, I mean, there was still a lot. I mean, uh, some of those, some of the guys there hadn't been there before. And so it was kind of mm-hmm. the first time to kind of experience that. Oh, okay. And so, you know, we, we, we knew we wanted like to try a couple of different things like pancakes, but, um, some of them, I think at one point wanted to be ambitious and like maybe add a third or like another, but, but I, I did, I did kind of advise like, yeah, no, it's still, it's big. It's big. So, um, might be a lot. So, um, but we tried a couple, um, uh, I think one of them was the, um, the golden ticket. It's what they call it. Uh, and then the other was the Black Magic. So the uh, I don't know either of those off the top of my head. The Golden Ticket is um, uh, comes with caramel, walnuts, and streusel. I'm just uh, and um, oh, and some banana in there too. Okay. So and then the Black Magic is uh, uh, features Oreo. So you know, of course, can't, can't go wrong there. Um. And then we each kind of had our own thing. I had like this, uh, I had a, like an egg dish, you know, kind of omelet, mm-hmm. um, okay. large, you know, big, you know, big order omelet with the large order potatoes. And yeah, it was, um, it was sizable. It was a, a good way to kind of, um, wrap up the, uh, you know, our movements and, and expending okay. energy and all that. So it was pretty good. And did you hit him with the bang bang? Did you go to the counter across the street after? Well, um, I wouldn't say bang, bang per se, because you'd have to, uh, I think you'd qualify it by going immediately to another restaurant after, okay. right? Um, mm-hmm. So not quite, but we, uh, later that afternoon, um, a few of us did uh, kind of visit another spot when we kind of went towards uh, towards back home. Mm-hmm. So um, we, uh, I had found out that... Um, one of uh, one of the barbecue pop ups was going to be at uh, Long Beach uh, that oh, afternoon, nice. so um, I convinced uh, some of them to um, try it out. <laughs> so, <laughs> so too ambitious for an additional pancake, but not not too ambitious for more barbecue. <laughs> That's correct. Well, okay. because you know, again, you space it out, so there's like uh, it can't it can't be that bad, right? So <laughs> <laughs> depends on how long you spaced it out with. It was good. We we met up later in the afternoon. So um oh, okay. in, in this case we uh we had have some A's barbecue at Ambitious oh, Ales. Wow. So uh we've talked about A's before. Um I know you and I have, you know, had it um we've tried it. So mm-hmm. um but they were down there. Uh they're they're out usually based in, you know, East LA. Uh, in that side of town, but um, they've started to kind of visit here uh, down wow. in Long Beach, and so um, they were there, and it was it was great. Um, we had a good tray. Uh, I know we had already had a large breakfast, but I wanted to make sure that we had um, a lot to you know to sand, to try, and you know a little bit of everything, if you will, one of each, okay. I guess. Of course. Yeah. So uh, we had a good tray. We had uh, some brisket some some spare ribs and some pork belly uh some al pastor flavored pork belly so those were that was a good part of it um and then we had a um a good selection of of sausages they had a they brought they brought the game with a lot of the sausages um some of the ones that really stood out honestly uh, was one of the new ones they had was a, a chili relleno filled sausage um and uh the the guy that that owns and runs it alan he was just kind of sharing that it was kind of inspired by uh, a well-known uh, spot in um there in east la called uh, la azteca and um you know they, they're known for a chili relleno burrito real yeah. good yeah a great one there and so he kind of had that idea and put that those elements into uh into a sausage and you could see it you could see the chili the the cheese um really nicely ground up and you know you take the sausage it's nice and it's got a nice firmness and you snap it it's got a very satisfying Mm -hmm. like snap when you open it um and the flavor is great you know um and that was just one of uh you know the many things that they they brought they also had this uh uh, tamale kind of flavored uh 
uh, sausage. So think of a tamale, you know, um, in a sausage, uh, case. Yeah. Yeah. The flavors of, of a tamale. Good. But, um, and you know, I got to tell you, it, uh, it, it really did kind of bring out those flavors of a, of a tamale oh, yeah? and a sausage. So, Ooh, nice. and, um, I think that was something I'd seen occasionally, like kind of being worked on and, you know, experimented, I guess. And, you know, he, I finally got to try it after a while and, it really, uh, it kind of delivered. So, so I enjoyed that. Good, um, good. So, um, other ones, uh, included a birria sausage. So, you know, kind mm-hmm. of your well-known birria flavors that we see around town these days yeah. in a birria in a sausage form. Um, and it, it, that delivered as well. And also a, uh, a chicken tinga. So chicken tinga mm-hmm. is like a spicier kind of spiced, uh, shredded chicken fla- dish. So, uh, putting that into a sausage was great. Um, really nice spice and a little bit of heat to it. So, actually, you have no reason to hide your um, you know, the ASMR that you bring um with your with your food. So that's uh, it's totally welcome. So <laughs> uh, maybe to you, but who knows about others? We'll find out. So just keep going. Um, <laughs> excellent. So, but yeah, and then as far as the sides, we had some uh, mac and cheese, or as they have mac and rajas, which is a uh, which is mi- in their case mixed with like some um, like poblano peppers and you know cream uh, mm. Mexican cheese and things like that. Oh, uh, nice. That's how they make their mac and cheese, and then a baked bean uh, side, which is more on the sweet side, and uh, some bits of um, bacon and other meats in there. So very that's a very hearty thing in itself. So it was a very very full tray. A little bit of everything, but still quite a good selection of, of things to try. After some big-ass pancakes? Absolutely. But uh, I have no regrets, and um, I think everyone uh, involved was quite satisfied as well. So, oh, good. so it was a good day overall, I'd have to say. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so not quite bang-bang, but um, it's close enough. Um, Fair. Yeah. Um, additionally, not, not, um, just kind of as a note, uh, and I think I shared this, um, with some of you guys, uh, previously, I, um, I visited Costco on a, on a Costco run and I, um, mm-hmm. came across their, uh, their ice cream, their vanilla ice cream, which, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, which they label as the super premium of vanilla ice cream, <laughs> super premium. And, um, it's it's a great it's a very nice vanilla ice cream it's a it's a very it's a more custardy flavored based ice cream so i i I had bought i'd gotten it because i'd read about it and it sounded interesting in that way and um having tasted it yeah it remind it definitely reminded me of like when we went out to texas and had that uh, bluebell ice cream Mm -hmm. out there you know again that very custardy vanilla flavor um, with the eggs and such, but, um, mm-hmm. I think the blue bell still, still definitely edges it out as far as being okay. even a little more so of that quality, but like, um, I'm, I'm finishing it up right now. I'm, you know, it comes with two half gallons and I'm like, you Who know, I, one I, I am, uh, I'm going through it pretty quickly, but, uh, it's quite, it's quite good. It's quite good. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of Costco, what I haven't been in a while, um, but my friend sent me a picture that they have a they got rid of the berry smoothie or whatever mm. and there's a mango smoothie now have you have you seen that i have seen it but i have not um not had it yet you're, it, well, you're it's, but it's your people it's mango. right right no i just haven't had the chance to you know have a proper food court meal um lately mm-hmm. so but yeah, uh, it's still being rolled out, but like a lot of stores now are definitely have, I think for sure, like the one at Los Feliz definitely has it. Oh, it better. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The one, maybe the one closer to work, it's just the Hawthorne one that has it too. And yeah. Oh, okay. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's starting to make its way around, but yeah. And I think, you know, uh, from what I understand, it's just like f- maybe like equivalent to four servings of mango or something, pure mango. Glorious. I don't think there's like necessarily any additional sugar or something uh i don't know but it's yeah Mm -hmm. i don't know we'll have to see it's just i'm sure it's just a great just dose of mango (laughs) if that's what you want just pureed like kind of smoothie mango goodness so Um, hell yeah yeah 
maybe if uh, we do try it out between now and then, we'll report back and um, we'll see what it's like. But it looks yeah. promising. Looks promising. Yeah. Good. It does remind me, though, just thinking, um, seeing or, you know, seeing other Costco's, you know, internationally, like what they serve mm-hmm. as their dishes. Yeah. It's like, it's like, why is our menu so basic? You know, <laughs> because you know why. I don't know why, but um, the okay. white people. I see. I see. They need um. Got to be bland. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Mayo is too spicy. Got it. Got it. <laughs> okay. Hey, man. Just say it. Okay. <laughs> um. But yeah, no. That's uh. At least they've got a little bit of a tropical flavor in there now with uh with the mango. That's a that's a bit yeah, exotic, but- right? I am sad about the berry thing going away because I did like it, you mm. know, but at the same time, I also really like mango. So I wonder if I don't know personally, like offhand, if it's a per- permanent change or if it's if they'll you Seasonal know switch it up. Maybe? Yeah. Who knows? Again, Who knows? more things to follow up on or just forget about. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that uh, that goes back to the ice cream. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, if you have a chance, try, try that out. Uh, it's pretty good. So, uh, that's a lot of, uh, what I've been up to. Um, obviously it's food and speaking of food, of course, thank you for joining us, uh, as we talk more about our food adventures and these local spots and pop-ups and everything in between, uh, with good food and, and good people. Um, you know, today, my child, I wanted to, um, kind of talk about a little bit of this uh little thing that we've got going on here um of the of this pod and um as of uh us recording um right now it has been like one year i think since we started this thing so God damn yeah uh, that's a lot to endure for you <laughs> <laughs> i honestly did not realize it's been that long yeah, you know, um, I'm not surprised. I don't blame you. I th- you know, I'm sure you want to just like kind of take it and just throw it out and just, you know, it's fine, you know, and just, uh, I'm sure you would have thought that it would have, um, been gone a long time ago. Oh, hundred percent. Absolutely. <laughs> this is a lot longer than I signed on for that I knew, or that I knew I was signing on for. <laughs> yep. That's, and yet we're still here. So, um, uh, you know, it is what it is. Still hanging in there. But yeah, it's been it's been one year since uh, you know since we recorded our first pilot episode. The pilot, huh? Oh, um, okay. So it may not be part of the official like serialized you know series of episodes we've had, but I still consider these um, you know part of the uh, what is it the library I suppose or canon of mm-hmm. uh, this sure. podcast. <laughs> yeah, the lore. <laughs> <laughs> the lore of the dumb and hungry. So. Um, yeah, it was interesting. I mean, um, we're not, we're not, uh, I'm not bringing this up to like, um, necessarily, uh, you know, um, what's the word just, uh, I just wanted to kind of, um, reflect a little bit on, you know, what's been going on so far. Maybe, you know, we talk about a little bit of the state of the pod and, um, things like that. Um, you know, it, I remember, you know, I had texted it's, you know, again, over a year ago, I kind of texted you like, Hey, I kind of want to, you know, do something like this. I want to just kind of share about some of these places that we visited, you know, together or, or at least on, you know, places I've been to and kind of tell those stories of my experiences and, um, about the food and the people that, you know, we've kind of met, um, because we've met a lot of good people, um, along the way that make that really work hard and, and put a lot of good, uh, care into making real delicious food um, and satisfying the various food groups of our existence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. With the base of being, you know, the most important. That's correct. Um, which we've kind of established really are uh, burgers, barbecue, yeah, bar- barbecue, yeah, and and tacos, tacos, yep, exactly. Yeah. So. Um, the base of the food pyramid. Exactly. Of our food pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. We'll get the we'll get the FDA on board on this. 
uh yeah we already put in a you know request petition mm-hmm. or something for them to uh to approve and revise so <laughs> look out look out for that you know that yeah that it's no longer you know it's now a plate right you know that right like the serving sizes yeah. and stuff it's actually yeah. a plate so we're gonna revert it back to the good old pyramid yeah good yeah. foundational structure so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um but yeah we've um so thank you know thanks for you know uh w- doing this uh together i just um so far what do we have to show for honestly not much but here's what we have <laughs> um just to kind of give a, a quick glance here we have th- we did three pilots because one, even though most people just do one, yeah, <laughs> but we did three because I don't know, we're just trying to practice. What yeah. were they? Avenue Twenty Six, mm-hmm. Fossil Mins, and what mm-hmm. was the third one? Well, well, that's what the internet is for. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. I'm glad you remembered um, at least one of them. So yeah, our first one was. Um, Avenue 26. Grillamall. Oh, Grillamall. There you go. We had that Avenue 26. We had uh, Fossilman's and then we had um, Grillamall. So um, just kind of a, a good like variety of things to uh, things to cover and to talk about. And then we started with our kind of serialized episodes, episode one and onward. And from that, including... Um, Including, I don't know, we're up to 28, you know, episodes so far. Not, including not including, not including this one. Uh, okay. Um, but, um, but yeah, so 28 episodes. And then we also have three, like, kind of like three of them. I know. Isn't that amazing? Oh, uh, look at that. He was hoping that he'd, uh, have to miss out on more, but that's fine. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't. Yeah. Well, granted, it's like when you when you couldn't, we everything just stopped. So <laughs> it's like we just couldn't move oh, forward, right. you know. <laughs> Never forget, you were also in the Philippines and refused to do anything on location. <laughs> that that's uh, probably part of some of the things we still need to work on. Still, things to come. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, Look, once we get our Taco Bell sponsor, we'll film on location every time. That's right. That's I think that's all we'll talk about at that point. I, I am a okay with this. <laughs> we can do the the what is it? Keith tries the whole menu thing. Yeah, yeah, kind of that try guys kind of deal. Yeah, absolutely. Taco Bell. I will totally do that. Okay. I'm saying. All right. We'll we'll put that down. That's definitely uh, come on Taco Bell, please. <laughs> let uh, we'll uh, we'll make sure to tag them. You know when we share this stuff. Perfect. Should, absolutely. Um, That'll do it. Okay. So, yeah. And so in addition to that, we also have a few of like these kind of bonus episodes. Um, not that very many. There's like three of them. But yeah, we had one with with the crew, um, you know, and uh, we also have one talking about our our friend uh, Patrick. Uh, so, yeah, there was um, there are more, I think, that we'd like to kind of do um, at some point. Uh, oh, the damn Mario movie. I forgot about that one. We talked about that too. Yeah. Yeah, as a bonus episode. Yeah, that was a fun one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think there are just kind of more things we'd like to talk about surrounding uh, about that, about our friend Patrick and, you know, um, some of the food things as well. But I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, you know, a lot of ideas, ideas floating around, but there's only so much time that we got, you know, um, but that's okay. We're just trying to trying to have fun with it here. Um, since then, also, I mean, again, it, it's um, we're up to twenty eight odd episodes. You know, it's been a year at this point. You know, you would think that if you were consistent, you'd have it. You know, at least fifty episodes or something. But <laughs> we're not quite yeah. there. But Not that, that. Um, yeah. So that that's uh, we'll we'll have to work on that. Um, but it's fine. We just keep moving along, just doing whatever we can. Um, do you have something to say? Nope. Okay. Uh, since then also, you know, we started with the two of us, uh, but since then we've also kind of brought on some other guests and co-hosts and people that we can talk to that um, basically relieves my chow. So we don't have to. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Sorry, we don't have anyone like that today. So we're just... <laughs> <laughs> just ah, you just got to endure this. Introverts got to learn at some point, right? I, that's true. That's true. Um, 
but uh, we've we've gotten on some pretty good people. We had Jamie um, and and Cat as well. Um, and we, interestingly enough, though, we still have not done an episode with all of us together. And um, I'm hoping that we can That's do that fault. at some point. Uh, well, I mean, sure, but not entirely. I mean, not like in a malicious way, um, but definitely also not unintentional either. No, I'm scared. <laughs> no. Hey, look, man, I work most weekends. All right. Yeah, I get it. I get it. He's a busy man. So, um, but we got to work on, um, you know, getting something together at some point. So it's been fun, though, to, um, you know, doing episodes and recording with, uh, you know, with these guys, too, um, especially because they actually know what they're talking about in in food and that sort of a lot more insightful than what you normally get. I think so. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll definitely kind of work more towards that. And then also with, uh, guys like, uh, John and, and even Daniel recently, I don't know, hopefully we yeah. can, John seems to be like, he, uh, he's, he's getting himself, <laughs> uh, you know, set up for the next, uh, next step, I guess. <laughs> so oh yeah. The training arc. I look the next time you see both of us <laughs> together, it'll be almost complete. I think so. So get ready, get ready, John. Um, uh, and then Daniel too, that was a fun, fun one that we did, uh, recently. Yeah. So, um, and he also has his appreciation of, uh, food in, uh, in LA and, and other and elsewhere. So hopefully we can get him on from time to time to kind of talk about, you know, things that we get to try out and, but yeah, it's, it's fun. It's fun. So, um, breaks up a little bit of the, the monotony, I guess, uh, that, you know, I drone on and on about and <laughs> it's gotta, but yeah, no, it's, um, that's what we have so far. That's kind of, uh, what we have to show for one year in and, uh, what the state of uh, the pod looks like. But I also wanted to kind of go over with you, um, just some of the, you know, the, the, the points, I guess, the stats and then a few of the overviews. Oh, this should be hilarious. <laughs> So you're not, you know, uh, to the listeners and even to the viewers, like, uh, I didn't share anything with my chow uh, ahead of time. I'm just looking it up here on my side. You know, I, you know, I have the accounts and stuff to look up. So um, we'll start off with Spotify because they have more meaningful data um, as far as the the demographics and so forth. Um, Okay. And then we'll also look at YouTube for the views and stuff. You know, when I, um, when I had this idea, when we started this, like I, I wanted this to really be just like, I was thinking just to be like an audio kind of deal, you know? Mm. Um, but I think because there was kind of this visual component of sharing, Uh-oh. you know, pictures and things like even stuff that we share, like on the internet or internet re- references, <laughs> That's true. there is a visual component as well, even though, you know, it could probably be done a little better, but, um, yeah, I think YouTube is kind of the, kind of the direction, uh, primarily, but I would, would be nice to have more participation and on the Spotify side. But with that said, um, let me just give you a quick rundown first of some of the numbers. Um, uh, so I just need to look that up. So, so a year in, I mean, it's, you know, nothing to write home about. It's, um, not, not stellar or anything, but we're looking, you know, at about 500 plays total, you know, across all these hey. episodes. There you go. See? That's a lot more than I expected. <laughs> I know. That's crazy, right? Thanks, Maria. <laughs> I, <laughs> all fi- all. It's all thanks to her. That's yeah. exactly it. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so that's that. Yeah, that was just Maria. And then... <laughs> <laughs> So that, that's pretty good. You know, um, we definitely saw the most kind of growth during, you know, kind of early on, maybe like mm-hmm. September, October when it was still kind of getting started. And then, you know, it's kind of, kind of got some tapered off and then kind of a, you know, regular kind of, um, you know, average. Yeah. But, we, uh, it was around then afterwards that we had slowed down a little bit in terms of doing stuff like yeah something came i mean up, I again know. like always something comes up some scheduling thing you know mm-hmm. some you know something going on and you know life you know we have mm-hmm. other mm-hmm. lives supposedly you know i at least my job does but yeah i mean it's <laughs> um we just do what we can we, we don't want to rush i mean i don't i wouldn't want to just push out anything um on a whim and uh, just you know even though that's basically what this is but i mean like you know <laughs> um 
without uh, carefully kind of going through it or whatever. Just, um, yeah. I mean, there's some thought, okay? It's not like, this is dumb, right? It is a dumb and hungry pot, but there is some thought that goes into this, okay? To an extent, you know. I Although I... Most- <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> not, surprisingly, not the one with dumb in their username. I'm telling you. Um, but let's look at kind of the odd. Like I said, this has more of the meaningful demographic stuff. So um, let's start with uh, geography, okay? Mm-hmm. So I, I, this, I'll tell you what we have here. And I'll, I can, there's actually a handful of places supposedly that we, we have listeners from. Okay. Okay. So let me just say it first. <laughs> Obviously, we have the United States, right? That's like the majority, mm-hmm. like 95%. So <laughs> thanks, Maria. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> but uh, these other countries that are listed here include, um, you ready? The United Kingdom, um, Canada, um, oh. Philippines, uh, huh? oh. Italy, and uh, and Brazil. You mean now, to tell me John, John Carmen and Daniel and Wendy listened to this while they were in Italy? Yeah. <laughs> I respect the dedication, guys. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your... Uh, and the rest are VPNs. That's what I was thinking. That's basically <laughs> all this is. It's just people switching their VPN. I have, I mean, there's. that's probably true, you know. I, I, I wouldn't doubt it if that were the case, but it the is interesting. One, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, Do you have family that listens to this? I I'm doubt so it. Sorry, I d- <laughs> to them, not to you. No, I get it. No, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> but let's take a closer look at the uh, United States and and see um, where they're coming from. Let me uh, just name. Well, we got California, and surprisingly, okay. from there, it makes up about three quarters of the total uh, listenership. Yeah, and viewership. That's so uh, we have other states. I'll name, I don't know, maybe up to five here. So we have California, huh? we have Virginia, uh, New York, Oklahoma, and Arizona. Those are like the five, you know, that kind of come up, that take up the maybe the largest bulk. Are there um, are more? There are. And they, make oh, up wow. a, and they make up, you know, each one makes up like uh, less than 1% of that total, mm-hmm. right? But uh, surprisingly, these other VPN locations make up. <laughs> <laughs> but let's dig a little closer. In California, uh, the different cities, um, we have, surprisingly, it's not Los not Angeles. LA. It's not what? LA that is the number one kind of geographic location. <laughs> no it, way. Yeah. It's, um, it's Santa Clara. That's up in Thanks, North Maria. Town. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying. It really <laughs> is. Holy shit. Santa Clara and LA comes next. Um, okay. Okay. Next is uh, like Carson Long Beach. So yeah, of course, that's okay. like that's 10% off the top for me. So mm-hmm. that's fine. Mm-hmm. That's all me. And then um, San Francisco again. Thanks, Maria. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So we have several other, you know, cities as well, again, that make up like you know, 1% each or whatever of that total. Um, but yeah, I mean, just kind of seeing these uh, locations, whether they are uh, true or not, I don't know. But it is interesting <laughs> yeah, to see something. these uh, on record. So that's pretty cool. Not LA. Yeah, well, <laughs> are we going to take this on the road? <laughs> kind of. <do. laughs> I mean, gonna, Nolly's been wanting to go up north. There you go. We're going to do a little. Well, she uh, just came back, but she wanted to go again. Okay. Well, we'll do a little, uh, we'll do a little tour there, you know, and meet Damn, our Maria listens to this more than the, the, our friends that live down here. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> uh, she must be, uh, yeah, very, John. very, very bored, but, um, very cool. Very cool. I really, uh, really do appreciate that again. As, uh, as you know, we refer to all our, um, you know, our, our listeners, our viewers, you know, our, you know, just our, our base, if you will. As, um, you know, they are our only fans. They are our, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, they are our listeners. We have no others. There are no others. They are the only ones. And Mm -hmm. um, we count on them and appreciate them very much. So thank you to our only fans. Um, Now, as far as uh, what they or how they listen, um, 
we have the applications that they use. Half of it is Spotify. I mean, that's okay, kind yeah. of not a surprise given that we host this on um, Spotify's hosting platform, um, which is now. Well, go ahead. What other data can there be? Like if they're not using Spotify, what? how does Spotify get this data? Well, the the way that um, <clears throat> that it works is that or generally works with podcast hosts and how you serve podcasts is that these podcast hosts, you know, you upload your episodes in, in this case, a pod, um, podcasters for Spotify is the, it was formerly anchor FM, but, um, mm-hmm. they take care of the hosting. So they store the files and, you know, you maintain, Uh-oh. manage them there. And then they mm-hmm. create uh, a link of a feed, an RSS feed, um, mm-hmm. And you take that link and then you distribute them and share them with these other, um, uh, you know, podcast directories, basically, which yeah. we know as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, mm-hmm. things like that. So on I those think- on those platforms, you just provide them the link, you know, and so, oh, yeah. Okay. And so Spotify will kind of aggregate that data, you know. Yeah. And most of them allows it, you know, that kind of uh, those demo- those uh, stats and stuff. So that comes back to. Spotify, and then that's how we see that here. Is that the API, if you will? Yeah, exactly. And the API will allow those uh, services to talk to each other. Um, but yeah, so next to Spotify itself, whether, I don't know, it doesn't matter whether it's the app uh, or mm-hmm. the, the the web app, the website. right? website, yeah. Um, but next to it is the web browser, so oh. that could be it. It could be the next biggest thing. And then following that is Apple Podcasts. Um, and then the two other platforms listed here are Overcast and Spotify for Podcasts, which are the platforms that I use. So that's just me off that's the top. You. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because that's me just kind of, um, you know, listening and testing listening. out yeah. and seeing how they mm-hmm. how they sound. So, um, but yeah, but the big ones, Spotify, the web browser and Apple Podcasts. So there you go. Hey, look at that. Here's the other thing, though, as far as other demographics. Um, gender. Okay. Um, three quarters are, um, are in fact male. All right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the rest are female. So thanks. Um, yeah, exactly. So one out of four is Maria and the rest are Angelo. That's great. Yeah. Well, Um, you mean maybe occasionally either John or (laughs) Daniel. Sure. Sure. Why not? Let's go with that. It won't be them. Um, and then age wise, not surprisingly, um, it's basically the damn millennials, you know, the millennials are the ones that are listening to the age 20 to 34 make up a whopping over 90% of this. So, okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, they clearly have nothing else to do because they're eating too much avocado toast and buying too much Starbucks (laughs) and, you know, there's room. Can't do anything else but listen to this Scarbo. Exactly. So, um, and then, yeah, that's, that's kind of the, um, you know, kind of the, the makeup, I think, at least according to Spotify. But I think that when we look at YouTube there, unfortunately there isn't as much meaningful data in, in this regard. Um, mm. and just, we just really don't have enough data for it to parse through. Oh, um, so, um, here it's kind of nice to see, um, also as a kind of factoid, uh, let's see, maybe almost a third of uh, devices that that people listen to use um, use iPhones, iOS devices. So makes sense. Um, that's the overwhelming majority versus other, apparently. It's just iPhone <laughs> just or other. other. It's just other. It's like <laughs> there, are other, there are other platforms listed here, but they're like they're far too small. Everything else is oh, other. So it's, I see. <laughs> um, now. Let's go through this. Um, we'll go through the top 10 um, episodes um, according to Spotify listenership, right? Okay. Um, so it'd be interesting to see and compare to, you know, later when we see YouTube stuff. But we'll look at the top 10. Again, we have uh, 30 plus, you know, kind of, um, you know, episodes or whatever, including the pilot and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um on here so we're going to take a look at that top third of it uh so 
I don't know if you want to bother guessing at all. You know, we're going to start from the bottom, right? From okay. the 10th and then kind of work our way up. So, um, I don't know. Do you want to take a stab or do you just want to go through it? I mean, I don't know. Maybe at the top. I'll take a stab at the top three. All right. Okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So let's start at number 10. Um, it is our episode 13 of A's Barbecue. Oh, wow. So we okay. were just talking about them, and um, A's Barbecue is uh, one of the more listened episodes, and that was a great one um, because I don't know that that in general. I think that was when, so that was episode thirteen. That's already when you know, like technically speaking, when I already had you know the theme music. I already had kind of mm-hmm. um, a more kind of a, you know a better kind of layout with the, with our with the kind lower of thirds. lower thirds and our screen capture and things like that. Yeah, production um, value went through the roof. I think so. So I think that's kind of when we, I kind of got my stride, if you will, like in the way this is kind of currently set up. Now that stride is not necessarily good, but I'm just saying like, that's what worked. Yeah. Um, but was A's, that like the same one with the uh, title card then? The first, the first one with the title card? Yeah, I think so. Like the intro, mm-hmm. that kind of intro. Yeah. 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 I think so. Um, but we got we got that. And A's, again, is a great uh, example of a pop-up, um, you know, of what you can, uh, gems you can find in L.A. One, it's, you know, it's barbecue, che- Texas-style barbecue brought to L.A. Um, it's also, um, you know, Chicano-inspired uh, flavors. Um, you know, what we were talking about earlier, the spare ribs are fla- kind of flavored with kind of this cafecito rub. So got a little bit of mm-hmm. a, it's not a strong coffee flavor, but it's more in this, you have this more, you have a rub that includes more sweet elements to it. But, um, you know, you have that in there. You have these Alpa store pork belly burnt ends. Uh, you have, again, all these sausages we were just talking about mm-hmm. earlier, you know, inspired by flavors growing up in kind of uh, the east side of L.A., um, all brought into this, you know, great kind of offering of barbecue. So, um, and, you know, made by someone who's born and raised, you know, in LA. So it's, um, it's definitely one of my faves for sure. Um, to get for a pop-up to get, you know, barbecue for whatever. I mean, it's just a good vibe, a good time whenever you're there. So that was, um, that was A's barbecue. Uh, the next one up, uh, actually is a, uh, will be kind of a throwback. It's our very first pilot for Avenue 26 oh, wow. tacos. So, um, Avenue 26, that was our first one. That was when, um, we had, uh, I don't know. Um, we kind of had this different layout. We, I actually, uh, pulled a, uh, a, a template from, I don't remember where, um, uh, like, you know, so we use OBS for our streaming, uh, for our screen capture and stuff. So I pulled this like kind of random theme from the internet somewhere. That's right. Had like this kind of purple colored frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, that was really used more towards, you know, those who are streaming for gaming or whatever. But we just kind of overlaid that in there because I just kind of give a little bit of decoration of kind of all the otherwise kind of boring, um, I don't know, setup we had. Actually, I think what it was originally, it's like it was just this... um, the element was just like a screen, uh, screen capture in OBS of just like the the Discord um, kind of uh, window between mm-hmm. the two of us. Like I just had both of our things on there, and then I just added that, um, <laughs> yeah. and then layered the 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 frame mm-hmm. on there on top of that. So it wasn't very sophisticated, um, but it was. Uh, that's why it was a pilot. So it was just kind of a start to get something off the ground, you know, because. You know, all too often in general, it's like you think about doing something, but you obviously like you want to do it right or you want to do it, you know, that, you know, you it looks nice or, you know, you, you don't want to mess up or anything. But like when it comes down to it, it's like you just got to do something, I guess you got to start with something and mm-hmm. then um, and then you just kind of improve from there. I mean, some people, they already have a vision, right, of like what they want to do, how they want to do it with a certain level of like finesse and polish. But yeah, that was um. This is where we started. Not that we've been, not that it's been great or improved vastly, but you know we've made oh, changes. It, it has. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I can tell you through the roof is great. It, it sure has. Um, 
so that's uh, Avenue 26. And Avenue 26 was mm-hmm. a great episode, too, to talk about because that was something early on that we both certainly have shared as far as food mm-hmm. we've had together. Not just us, but with, like, our friends and, you know, kind of remembering those and particularly like Avenue 26, you know, when they were set up on Avenue 26 uh, in that Northeast LA area, um, in that small alleyway where we would park and just, uh, you know, kind of go in this dimly lit, like, you know, um, alley and just grab $1 tacos at the time. Uh, good times. Yeah, those were, those were the days, you know? So, um, I don't know. You got shut down like twice in the same week at some point. And yeah, just... I know. Exactly. <sighs> And then not soon after, right, then then you had a whole um, uh, vast, like, kind of crew of different vendors come out set up there. Yeah. And then that got shut down. And then um, eventually they all picked up and they left and they went to a totally different part of town now. They're like, I don't know, somewhere more east, just a totally different city. Mm-hmm. But they still call themselves the Avenue 26 Night Market. But I think, like, Avenue 26 Tacos doesn't even, like, go there anymore i think they just have their own they just have their own thing like they're just set up here wherever it is in la now so Mm -hmm. um but yeah it's taking a life of its own it's been very interesting um the next one up we have is our ninth episode with smoky jones barbecue and um smoky jones is uh you know much and i've uh, shared a lot of good food um with them with russ and viv and uh, currently they, you know, they are living in, uh, in the, is that the East Coast? I don't know. Florida. Uh, yeah. Yes, okay. it is. All right. What? what do you mean you don't know? Well, I mean, the like it is, handle. it is right. Um, so it's, uh, that's where they're at now. And I'm sure they're killing it out there. I'd love to talk to them. I should, uh, I should see if they'd be willing to come on um, for whatever it's worth and just kind of see what's going on with them. But uh, definitely miss them. They've made some really great barbecue. They're based out here on, on the West side in uh, Culver city. And um, they just made some really good barbecue and they were really friendly. And, you know, whenever we order and pull up, uh, they always had something to share. And um, it was nice. You know, they always had the, you know, some staples like brisket and ribs, but then they'd also rotate, you know, some, some good dishes there. Any, you know, as you like that char siu, remember that? That was, uh, yeah, was uh, pork, hell yeah, char siu pork belly. That was a fun bite, right? So good, yeah. Um, so yeah, we we had a lot of um, a lot of good times. Nice Smoky Jones, yep. So hopefully, they I don't know, maybe we got to go out there. Um, yeah, I've never been to Florida, yeah. I mean, they're kind of far up more north, so they're like kind of far from like wherever Disney World is or whatever, but. For, I mean, anyway, maybe we can figure something out. I don't know. But that's uh, that's Smokey Jones. Um, the one next from there actually is kind of a compilation. Um, this is when we talked about the uh, Taco Chronicles episode, um, LA episode mm-hmm. from, you know, from the Netflix series. Mm-hmm. Um, so we talked about that because, you know, I'd watched the episode and, um, the LA episode featured a lot of, you know, LA places that we've been, that we've tried, um, including, uh, El Russo, um, and, and several other good spots. So, um, wanted to just kind of talk about and highlight those. So, um, apparently people, uh, liked it and they, and a good amount of people listened to them. So that's, uh, Taco Chronicles, the LA episode. Um, next above that is the, actually the episode before that episode 14 with Bart's barbecue. What? That's a lot lower (laughs) than I thought. No kidding. Okay. So Bart's is, uh, um, he's one of the, the, the big barbecue guys. Um, but Dustin is, uh, Dustin Bart's is kind of a character, you know, he's, uh, he's a kind of an unfiltered kind of guy that just speaks his mind, you know? But, you know, actually, when you kind of know him pretty well, he's actually a pretty nice guy. Um, but, yeah, he's just kind of rough around the edges. Um, he just, if something bothers him or just, like, it's not jiving with him, he just kind of lets you know. He gives you his opinion and, like, what he thinks about, like, a certain food or a certain dish or if it's, like, overrated or, like, whatever. And, like, he won't he won't uh, hesitate to, to yeah. let you know. <laughs> and that guy's, like, always bouncing around um, to doing finding the next best thing. You know, for a while, I forgot, I think where we left that episode is, you know, he's doing like 
he's still doing like catering stuff and he was doing like um he was serving up food for Cypress Hill of all people of all groups, which was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. That's um, right. But uh, for a while, he was doing kind of a a smash burger stint, um, kind of near where he's at, and he was doing that um, near like one of the, a golf course nearby, and that was doing pretty well. And then it kind of slowed down, and then he kind of got uh, he's just, he just figured ah, I'm gonna just do something else. So he kind of doing um i think he's doing like meal prep stuff now so he's like making okay. food for meal prep still like it'll include barbecue and you know other good good foods like the food he makes is is great like it's good food um but it's just like he's just kind of always kind of finding and bouncing around from one thing to another just to yeah. you know just to make sure that people will keep uh yeah exactly keep people interested keep keep it fresh so um but yeah um and he's definitely the one who definitely puts the smoke in smoked meats. I'll tell you that too. <laughs> um, but Bart's, uh, Dustin Bart's, that's a pretty good one. I thought um, that'd be top three for sure. You think so? Okay. I thought, well, I thought so, yeah. We'll, we'll take a look at the, um, at the YouTube, see where that falls. But, okay. Um, so next one up, we're, we're up to, uh, here we go. Number four. Is episode twelve with Loki Burritos? Oh wow! Yeah, so Loki Burritos, um, Ellie's favorite uh, breakfast burrito. Um, they were featured, you know, initially in uh, like an Eater article, and with this uh, signature kind of cheese crust uh, finished on the burrito. Um, so that became a quick favorite. So that was um, now they. Uh, when we f- last, uh, when we wrapped up that episode, we were we mentioned that they had they were at a brick and mortar kind of window mm-hmm. location in Hollywood. Yeah. But since then, that kind of changed. So they're down, what? yeah. So they're down here in Long Beach, and they're doing their pop up kind of rotation. But they have um, a regular uh-huh. rotation down here, so they hop around a couple of different spots pretty regularly. Um, so you'll find them over the weekend for sure. Um, yeah, that's crazy these spots here. So yeah, so, I'm not sure. I th- I think that spot in general, like that whole complex, because it wasn't just them. It was like mm-hmm. part of this like kind of restaurant group or whatever. Yeah. Have. But I think that you know that a lot of things have kind of changed there. Um, since. Yeah, I went to visit there after the episode. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. You did report back. You did kind of share, yeah. and it was uh, and I think you were generally uh satisfied with what they oh, had. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. So that huh. uh, sad they're yeah. not there anymore. Yeah, it's too bad. But it's uh, so close th- to me. I know. Now um not closer to you though. They are. Yep. So um you still have a there's still a good uh, offering of breakfast burritos, no shortage in LA, right? So um but yeah, with that signature cheese crust, you'll find them down here uh at Loki Burritos. So that's Matt, I think. Matt Stevanus um out there. Cool. Um now we're up to the top three. So now you get to ref- try to see if you know what the top three are so let's let's start with number three actually just uh, actually I don't just know. i won't know which one's one two three that's right that's right just just name me three right name me three of the episodes i don't know if you know that have the list in front of you or whatever but just the mario episode super mario movie okay uh the the one we filmed with the crew at when we went, what, where was that? What when we did that Airbnb? Yeah, it, like Isabel, uh, was it the Isabella? Lake Isabella, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Damn, that Bart's on there. I don't know now. Let me look at a list. Uh, which was the one that? Oh, uh, would it be Burgers Never Say Die? Um, so those are your three? Yeah. Wait, uh, but then there's the one with Jamie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The ones with Jamie. I'm sure those are higher. I'm going to um tell you right now, we're not actually at the top three yet. I uh Oh you lied. I made a, I made a mistake. We're a one off. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um so let, me move, four. let me move on. <laughs> <laughs> Is one of the ones I said on in number four. Once again, the Dumb and Hungry podcast bring you quality content. Um, <laughs> let's just go through this one. This one, this next one, number four, actually, 
um, mm-hmm. is episode 16, which is titled New Year, Who Dim Sum? And this was um, one of the first episodes we did uh, in the beginning of the new year. Uh, this was an mm-hmm. episode we did with, uh, with Jamie. Mm-hmm. And so um, this was when we visited um, the, a new dim sum restaurant at that time. It was uh, Bistro 1968, I want to say is the name out in the SGV. And so we kind of talked about our meal, our experience. And, you know, it was a great meal. Um, great quality dim sum, big portions, uh, good quality. It was still kind of an, it's definitely a new spot early on. So they were just kind of still working out a lot of the logistics and the service and everything like that. But at that time it was a very solid meal and, and, a, and a good time. Um, so we talk about that, um, in that episode. So that was pretty good. Now we are in, uh, the top three. So tell me again, which ones you thought. We're in three. So it would be, I think, the Super Mario movie still. Okay. The, what was it? That one with Jamie and and me as okay. well, the one we did, that one. Okay, okay. Uh-huh. And what was the other one I said? Uh, The one with Atlantis. Yeah, like Isabella. Okay. Yeah. All right, so are any of those there? Um, yeah. Oh shit! Okay, I got, I got at least one. But let's go over them. So yeah, number at three. number three, while it is a bonus episode, it's not the bonus episode you were thinking. Um, uh, it this uh, next one is a bonus episode, and it's the one of Patty's picks where oh, we really? talk about um, booze and chego. Yeah. Um, oh, so that uh, so we talk about those so booze for Philly cheesesteaks, mm-hmm. and Chego, uh, one of Roy Choi's restaurants that closed down in uh, in Chinatown, um, which was uh, both very good and um, you know something. I miss Chego still. I know those Ooey gooey day. fries definitely hit the spot yeah. and still especially for while waiting like in line. <laughs> yeah, waiting in line for uh, for it's fried so chicken, good. right? Yeah, yeah, that was that yeah. was a good appetizer, a good thing to because at that time mm-hmm. it's like. For the time that you're waiting in line, it's like, yeah, you already have like a meal. Well. And like by and the time you're done, right there. that's right. You get finish it off with something sweet. So yeah, or if you want coffee, right next to scoops. Yeah, yeah, yep. <laughs> or boba right across the way. So <laughs> uh, that's true. That There's like true. a whole like yeah, it's a whole host of options, no shortage. So um, it does remind me though. I mean, I'll maybe touch up on it later, but like I, I think we kind of need to do more of these, and I personally feel like I need to revisit a number of these places um mm. there are a couple that i do have in mind that i do want to revisit and just kind of uh remember um some of the food there and some of the you know thing memories that uh we've we've uh, shared at these uh some of these restaurants but um i mean this was before the time again uh we were on yelp or instagram or you know anything mm. serious like that um yeah we were just kind of you just kind of look around for spots and I don't know, these came up and they were, they were solid. So, but that's, um, that was, uh, Patty's picks. Um, number two and number two is, uh, episode 11 with the Troy man and Sonora town. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, we, this was the first episode I had the, uh, I guess I had the thought of just like kind of throwing in, uh, the twofer, uh, namely because they were kind of related to each other. Uh, mm-hmm. So the Chori Man is a kind of artisan chorizo uh, spot that primarily, you know, focuses on wholesale to different restaurants of excellent quality chorizo. One of those spots uh, is Sonora Town, which is one of LA's more popular um, taco or taquerias. Um, so they're out in Fashion District down in downtown. Lucky you. Yeah. No, so, not lucky me. I tried to go there when we came back from New York. I was like, "Oh, let's go get let's go get Sonora Towns right there." Mm, mm. There's no parking, man. There is no parking. Yeah, it's terrible. I mean, it. What time did you go? Just curious. It was like noonish. Mm. Yeah, that'll kill so, you. Yeah. Next so, time, just gonna see if we can walk there. I think so. It's still, it's still a walk, but 
Eh. Yeah. Like but um, it is. It's a great. It's a great spot. Um, and you know, so one of the item, one of the proteins you can get at North Town is uh, Chory Man's chorizo. So, mm-hmm. um, but you know, they're both excellent places on their own. They have great offerings of um of what they do. A Chory Man is uh kind of known to have these great like breakfast burritos, um, with the chorizo and and other items as well that they rotate. And then Sonora Town is kind of signature for their flour tortillas and great kind of carne asada and things like that. So um, both wonderful spots. So that comes in at number two. Uh, finally, at number one um, is, uh, in fact, uh, the previous episode, number 10, five in mind with uh, with Jammers. Okay. So that was yeah. the episode that you mentioned uh-huh. that we were the three of us. And that was the first time we had uh, any form of a uh, guest or anything like that on. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Jamie, that's kind of Jamie's debut uh, here. And um, Makes sense. it was uh, the first and definitely not the last. So we would um, uh, hear from her again in following episodes and um, to just kind of get her kind of relaxed and kind of uh, actual meaningful take on food and thoughtful things and um, also she, she just kind of speaks, you know, what she's thinking, you know, and so it's kind of nice to get that, refreshing to kind of get that point of view on what she thinks about certain things, um, in very casual, uh, very casual way. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that episode was cool. We were just kind of asking her like at that moment, what were kind of the five things that she was, uh, thinking about food wise, you know, things that stuck in her mind. It's not necessarily like a, a ranking, uh, but just, mm-hmm. you know, just in general, you know? Um, but I think that's pretty well five ish. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But that was, um, that was, uh, that episode with, with her. And so that turned out real good. So that's, um, that's the top 10 from, um, according to Spotify, you know, listenership. Mm -hmm. So, um, what do you think? What do you think? I honestly thought bars would be higher. (laughs) Yeah. I guess the Spotify crowd doesn't think so. Yeah. Um, But we still have the YouTube list to look through. But before we do, yeah, do you have uh, any other thoughts that you wanted to kind of look at? How many of those VPNs were just you? I know. It's probably at least half. Yeah, I'm glad. Because <laughs> yeah. I got to change my location. Everyone. I can't like people know where just I am. Just the right? case, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I remember, uh, like, there were many times where... We were recording and your internet was garbo because you didn't turn your VPN off. Yeah. Yeah. I'd learned that. You know, have to, some of the technical things, you know. Um, so we improved yeah. on that and uh, it's getting a little so better. So much unreleased footage of just messing with the sound. <laughs> I know. I know. Like a lot of like cut audio, like, you know, things not playing back right. You know, it's just, it's a mess. It's a mess. And then, you know, putting poor my child through that. And then like, like, okay, like we've spent like the last hour trying to figure this out. Let's record now. And it's like, like almost 10 o'clock or something. It's like, fine. It's like the next week, some sort of a different problem. Some other, yeah. Some other issue. It's like, we think we figured out one thing and then like another issue comes up. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh man. I think we've got, I think right now we've got to a point. I think the big, uh, you know, the big help, you know, on the technical side, you know, using, um, we use voice meter for our virtual audio to route um, our audio devices, both hardware and software through. And I had no idea how to use it and I still don't, but I finally <laughs> found a couple of videos that um, I managed to just kind of base my setup on and tweak a few settings and, and it's good enough. So I'm happy with that. So government um, employee mentality. <laughs> exactly. So I, I just, <laughs> good enough Crap. for government work. <laughs> Um, but I just made sure to, you know, take a lot of screenshots and, uh, you know, just try to make sure, but not in any like organized way, just like take a bunch of screenshots and then hopefully oh, sift through them go. later. Like, um, one of these works, you know, it's like, eh, so. you got it. It's fine. Exactly. Um, so let's take a look at, um, some of the, the details here from, um, YouTube, because like I said earlier, even though I was thinking that Spotify or some, like the audio kind of method, you know, medium would be the main way we would share. Um, I think uh, YouTube's kind of the direction we'd have to go because there's just this visual element. I don't know these days now because I don't know, just depending on the format that we keep or whatever. But 
um, we'll just keep uh, we'll just keep going with what we're doing and, and see how it goes. But yeah. um, again, there's not as much in the demographic side of things of uh, of what we're looking at. But I can give you some at least numbers on viewership and just that sort of thing. Um, let me see what I can find here. So I just had it up. And then uh, it's God damn it. now. So another technical, the technical issue. difficulties can keep, continue. Exactly. It wouldn't. It w we wouldn't be us without them. So yeah, that's fair. So uh, just taking over the lifetime. Apparently, this. It's interesting. It's like uh, I'm really not sure when we officially. <laughs> at this point, I actually don't even know when we officially started because the lifetime shows a, a start date of July 12. Uh, last year, which is a week before, you know, um, currently, but the first, Recorder. but I think the first time we recorded something was actually on the, was yes, it was on the 18th, which was just like the day before. Yeah, um, that was a live stream. Did we do any test recordings or anything? We could have, we could have, I mean, or is that when you made the account? It could have been also, it's possible. I mean, we did some test streams. I mean, I, I know I did. It's possible that could have been the case, but uh, regardless, um, as an overview, again, these are these numbers. Even though they're like a lot more than the Spotify numbers, we're talking about YouTube, which is a massive platform. So these numbers are like chump change compared to like mm -hmm. what you would probably see. So over the lifetime, uh, we're we've seen about uh, twenty seven hundred views total. Hey. about 1500 hours of watch time and a whopping 25 subscribers so hey. uh or as we refer to them as our only fans so thank you for them very important. um as far as the content again um I, we're looking at uh about those numbers but the numbers that i wanted to come across here so there are there's a stat of impressions and those are the numbers that you know, YouTube pushes out, um, that people see, um, well, it's, it's the content that people see, whether they do searches or whether YouTube pushes it out to them or whatever. Mm -hmm. So okay. we're looking at about, um, 33 K, you know, of impressions, about half of them is from YouTube pushing them out to, uh, okay. through their algorithm. And from there about 1300, um, uh, are people um, who have clicked through and viewed some form of this content. And so that uh, comes up to almost you know, about 900 hours of watch time. What? Which is fine, I guess. Um, as far it's as... a lot how, more than I ever expected. <laughs> I know. Um, that's 900 more than zero. I'm telling you right now. That's hey. pretty good. Um, about a third of those come from just bringing up uh looking probably looking through playlists so they they could probably be searching for the channel and then opening up one of the playlists that we have as a as a podcast playlist okay. um and then another is um a channel just like visiting the channel page directly like they find the link uh maybe i have some link elsewhere or whatever but uh, mm -hmm. they go through the channel and browse that way about a tenth of it actually is through um, uh, YouTube, like searching on YouTube, like s whether it's, I doubt they're searching for that actual name, but <laughs> some related search term, you know, that happens to bring up our stuff, you know, so um, maybe eventually it'll get, it'll grow or something, something like that. Um, but yeah, the again, dream? at this time, uh, it's like 25 subscribers, but about, 80 percent it's like an 80 20 split 80 percent of those of the people who watch this stuff is are not subscribed which is typical like the majority yeah, of people that will yeah they will not be subscribed but um yeah but the other the rest of them uh, are which is cool that means again 20 percent of people are somehow regularly subscribed and somehow keep up with this which is fine i guess um yeah uh so we talked about yeah, where their where traffic is coming from, mostly the playlists and visiting the channel page, and geography. Again, there's not much in the demographics. We just know that 
they're coming from the United States in this case. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's really about it as far as demographics. So let's just uh, go into the top 10 um, episodes uh, from uh, as far as views go, according to YouTube. And um, I'm just curious. I don't even know this offhand. I'm just asking this out there. How many of the episodes from, do, do you think there's going to be some overlap? You think they're going to be the same episodes from the Spotify rankings, or do you think they'll be different? Um, there's altogether? definitely going to be some overlap. Okay. But that's not a, completely that's a different. Safe, not, yeah. Definitely a safe answer. Um, the reason I'm thinking it, like, you know, like, what, what was it when Jamie was first on? She was, she only put the YouTube link on her story, right? It mm-hmm. wasn't the Spotify link. So I'm sure that's going to be up there a lot mm-hmm. more than the mm-hmm. Spotify mm-hmm. one would have been. Yeah. You know, admittedly, when I think about it, when we share these, usually I, I just drop these, it's not even like, it's relatively a quiet share compared because mm-hmm. I share these as stories. And um, I save the stories as a highlight on my profile. But uh, when I do, I, I just share the YouTube link because primarily, you know, you can only share one link at a time on a story. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I'd rather have the YouTube link. Um, but my my profile, my Instagram profile has a link to, you know, a page that with all the other links, you yeah. know, whatever. But link tree or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. But as far as, um, you know, uh, what we share in our stories when we drop these episodes, those are uh, those are the YouTube links the YouTube that we share links, on there. Yeah. But let's see where that's gotten us. Um, so at number 10, um, we have uh, we have Goldberger. That's episode four, Goldberger. And um, so that was uh, episode four is definitely early on. Mm-hmm. And um, that was uh, definitely one of the episodes, definitely one of those places that definitely uh, gave me the idea that I wanted to kind of start this and... Um, kind of talk about these types of places. This is a great example of a pop-up turned um, mm-hmm. brick and mortar. So it has a great story of how they started and how they really gained popularity in a relatively short amount of time. And I think in a couple of, less than a couple of years, they secured a brick and mortar, you know? Yep. Um, so I had, I mean, both of us, honestly, I, you know, having dr- dragged you along to have you know a lot of share of, of these burgers um, this was an earlier introduction to uh, the, the smash burger style and the smash burger scene growing in LA. Um, and uh, Goldberger was definitely one of those places uh, that I can remember, you know, very well um, making a great burger and something that um, Alan uh, that he wanted to uh, really make. And he has that signature kind of aioli sauce which is great. And, um, really now he has two locations in LA, um, mm-hmm. making some of LA's favorite smash burgers and burgers in general. So it's, it's, it's a lot of, um, it's a lot of fun to see. It's really nice. And I'm very happy, um, for them. I, um, at some point we're going to, I'm going to look at some of the other stats for each episode and see if there's anything, like kind of uh, worth uh, bringing up, but um, that's uh, I'll bring that up as we go along. But um, that's Goldberger, so that was number ten. Mm-hmm. Um, moving up uh, at the next spot is actually um, episode eleven, which is the Chory Man in Sonora oh. Town. So there's your overlap, but interestingly enough, it's kind of on the lower end of this list. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked, we just talked about them. Great, uh, you know, uh, great burritos, great, uh, flour tortillas with Sonora town. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that's make sure you check, check them out. Um, I just wanted to say also back, um, take a step back with Goldberger, as far as some of the other technical things, you know, I had uh, started just to use for the thumbnails. Um, of course, like when you upload a video, uh, YouTube will generate thumbnails based on, you know, what it captures, you know, as it processes the video and you can choose the, the, you know, the generated thumbnails that it makes, but you can of course generate your, and add your own, um, thumbnail. And so uh, I initially just, um, used photos, right. That I had, um, 
I take in and just use those primarily. Mm -hmm. Um, but with an episode like the Chori man, I started, um, using thumbnails that included, you know, our faces, um, in there like screenshots Uh, of, you know, us, um, and then featuring some of the food in there. So, um, this, that was like kind of one of the early iterations of, of that. So, um, namely because, you know, uh, YouTube kind of does a little better, um, when you have stuff like faces and recognizing things like that, it does, mm-hmm. it usually does a little better overall in the, uh, in the algorithm. Not that it matters for us. It doesn't matter, but you know, it's just like <laughs> something for we future, do. Sure. You know, once yeah, we make sure. it big. Sure. Right now <laughs> I'm big now. So moving on, um, <laughs> Up next, actually, is um episode we have not seen, episode seven at Moose Craft Barbecue. Okay. So this one uh, was an interesting one, and uh, this was great because it's just another kind of story of a pop-up turned brick and mortar of uh, one of the great food groups of barbecue. Mm-hmm. Um, this was kind of, kind of getting into like when I'm really getting to the rotation of like finding good barbecue spots and finding this scene of Texas barbecue in LA, you know, we had stuff like Ragtop and slab, you know, in those places. Uh, and then we have, uh, and then we had places like moose and heritage and then followed by Smokey Jones and A's mm-hmm. and AGL, um, Bart's just, um, many great kind of examples of, um, barbecue in LA um, that could definitely be the argument that LA has great barbecue. So, uh, Moose is a great example. So, um, again, starting off one of those in the backyard and then doing like rotations at different breweries and other pop-ups and things like that, uh, Smorgasburg as well. And then finally securing a home in, uh, Lincoln Heights, um, a really great space, large space with a built-in tap room, um, and good space to make um, more of their barbecue and scratch made sides. So, and that's with uh, Andrew and uh, and Michelle, and um, yeah, it's uh, definitely one of those places that is definitely worth visiting. So, and glad it's like kind of in, you know, our backyard, and we can definitely uh, like backyard as far as the city goes, and we can just kind of visit and pop in, you know, whenever we want. I mean, that's just kind of yeah. the great thing about having a brick and mortar now, right? Um, it's just more accessible. So it's, it's such a wonderful kind of, uh, thing to behold. So, um, next is actually comes at, um, episode 10, which is the five in mind with, oh. with jammer. So actually what was, uh, top episode in Spotify has become kind of a low mid <laughs> kind of ranking yeah. here. Um, I did not expect that. I know I'm telling you. Um, so we, we kind of had fun with that. That was interesting too, because, um, again, because I was with Jamie, uh, that was the first time we had a third person and that on the technical side, I had to add into, you know, our streaming and, and, um, screen capture and, um, adding, adding that, uh, video is easy to work with, you know, when you add these different elements, but the audio is trickier. Um, Mm -hmm. and so, and especially we were all using, and this was time when we were using, um, Skype with Jamie, um, because typically we use uh, discord here, but, um, so I, I had not worked with that before. So I had, I had some trouble kind of getting on. And so I think I remember asking you to join me at least an hour before. Yeah. And even then we still couldn't figure that stuff out. Um, but we barely did just to get something working. Um, Mm -hmm. so thankfully, thankfully that worked out. And, um, but now I have a setup that works, um, for those, uh, that will have listened, actually the, the episode we have as we stream now as it released was, um, the episode we did with Jamie and Kat, we talk about our, um, uh, adventures in the OC and, um, well, I was able to, to record that, you know, using Skype and, um, mm. have that set up here with OBS and have that all work out. So that was, uh, evolution. That was good. Um, growth. Yeah. So that's the five in mind. Next up, <laughs> interestingly enough for me, at least is, um, episode 23 on location at Bistro Nas. Oh. So, um, that's an episode that technically features all of us, <laughs> you, me, <laughs> 
uh, sure. Jamie and Cat, but but not quite in the same space. <laughs> it features all, but not not all together. Like yeah, in the same space. So that um that was interesting. So that was really a more audio forward uh kind of episode, um because uh, yeah, me Jamie and Cat we visited out to Bistro Nas out in the in the SGV, and uh, I brought an audio recorder. Um, and then we just kind of uh, use that to to record our conversation. So that was a challenge for many reasons. Um, one, I didn't use it properly, and I ended up not picking up my own voice. So it was really just them talking. It it really was. It, it actually, actually like the majority of the conversation was like totally totally fine. Like even if yeah. even without my stuff, like I barely contributed anything. So it's fine. <laughs> Um, but then also the other challenge was like the ambient noise, you know, of the, uh, of the restaurant. So, I mean, had to do a lot of editing to cut out, of course, a lot of the dead, dead space or whatever in between the talking and then, um, and then the noise of like the other people in the restaurant as well. So it, it turned out okay, but, uh, you know, but I guess it turned, it was okay. It was a decent episode. I imagine because a lot of people are research doing research or trying to find Mm -hmm. videos on Bistro Nas. Um, That makes sense. Yeah. So, um, but that was, uh, that was, um, our f- first kind of on location kind of, you know, kind of deal, which is, uh, which is interesting. It was interesting. It was, uh, it's kind of nice. Um, next up, what do we have? We have, um, episode nine, which is Smokey Jones. So we've, uh, which- We've Which talked about that. This? That's number five. Number five. five. Okay. So um, let me see if I can. I don't really have a good comparison here. Like, it kind of falls like within the range. I don't know. Like, in Spotify, Smokey Jones was like I think number seven. Yeah, and then here on YouTube is number five. So anyway, yeah, I'm not surprised because that one they even they plugged it on their Instagram. So. Okay, yeah. So that was um that was a good one. Um what's an, was what's another kind of interesting metric here is like how long people are watching this stuff on average. Mm, okay. This one is definitely up there. It's like about two thirds of the episode is being wow. it's being like kind of viewed um in some way. I don't know if it's like continuous Ooh, or like if it's like forty minutes. Well, the episode yeah. is about uh I don't know. I mean that translates to at least an hour. I mean, the episode is longer. The episode is probably like an hour and a half or something. Hour Um, 41. Okay. Yeah. So people are watching. I don't know. I just imagine they just play it and they just set it, you know, and forget it, you know, I mean, that's fine, but just at least having us on in the background, listening to this garbage. That's uh, impressive. That's true. Thanks Maria. (laughs) Unless they just muted it. Uh, Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) Oh, that's right. They could have muted it easily, easily. Yeah. So, that's uh let's see i wish there was something there was something i was trying to look at here but i'll i'll get back to that so that's uh smoky jones all right now we're getting to that was number five right so now we're mm-hmm. uh, rounding up four number four is episode 17 which is agl's craft meats so oh. it's another barbecue pop-up so that's um yeah alec who was formerly of uh, Howlin and then uh, kind of started his own pop up with uh, with Texas style barbecue, and this guy he's currently um, he's in New York, kind of working with some people over there. Um, I think I don't know maybe he just needed kind of a new direction or just kind of a new you know or a fresh view or something. But yeah, um, he's out there, but hopefully he'll make a return here. But he he's definitely one of the people that I've been lucky to kind of meet and kind of follow. Um, I met him at one of his first pop-ups or like when he was kind of helping out another, um, barbecue kind of pop-up, um, at that time. And, um, you know, it was, uh, kind of a late evening and he was still, they were still serving out food over there and the barbecue was pretty good. It was decent. And, um, we were just talking about how he picked up his, um, you know, what he knows. And he was just sharing like how he saw stuff on YouTube and followed specific people and yeah. And then, um, yeah, I just kind of started doing it on his own. And then like, it's great. It's just one of those things that you see over time, the quality and the skill just kind of improves and gets better. And so each meal that you have reflects that it just gets, 
better and better, you know? Um, so, I mean, that, that one was great. I was, uh, I really enjoyed that. Um, so that came in at number four. Okay. So we're now here at the top three of YouTube. So if you can guess again, we've already mentioned the ones we've done. Um, but let's see if you can guess which ones are on this list. I'm still going with Bart's. Okay. That's gotta be there. It's gotta be on it there. Hasn't been mentioned yet. Okay. Yeah, what else? Be. Uh, what else? What was one that was very, that we, if I didn't mind, I'm surprised that was so low. Mm. That was the one I was thinking of. Okay. Oh, what about the Filipino snack one you did with Filipino Jamie snacks? Tan. Okay. Okay. And then. Avenue 26 hasn't come up, huh? Mm, no, they haven't. Yeah, I, I'd go with that one. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's run through top three. At number three is episode eight at Heritage Craft Barbecue. Oh, okay. So um, one of the early episodes still. Um, but yes, this was another great addition to the barbecue rotation. You know, um, I post Texas, this was post Texas. That's right. I think, um, after our, after our visit to Texas, um, after John's bachelor after party, John's, it's John's bachelor party. Okay. Let me remind you of that planned completely by you and your interests. That, it was, uh, for the good of the group, but, um, <laughs> After, but, but after a, a weekend of barbecue, I think we had to round it out with uh, another another round of barbecue. And so uh, after we flew back, we went to we went down to the OC, deep in the OC actually, and mm -hmm. um, we had uh, barbecue there. So um, yeah, Heritage is just another one of those great uh, examples of like pop up turned uh, brick and mortar. So they um, they have a really beautiful location out in San Juan Capistrano, across from the from the mission out there. Um, nice outdoor seating, you know, and they have these great smokers that are like apparently like the first ever NSF certified for California. So they're like legit, I suppose. That kind of paved the way for others to do the same thing. Um, but then they have another location. I'm not sure if you recall, they opened a second one, um, in Oceanside, but that location is focused on, um, on, on brews on, uh, you know, beers and, and brewed drinks and things like that. So it's very beer forward. Um, but they still make a lot of, you know, great dishes. Um, I don't know if they do like the same a la carte, uh, you know, tr trays and things like that. Or if they're planning to do that, but they have they use definitely the meats and stuff to make certain kinds of dishes um, over there in the Oceanside spot. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's uh, that's them. Now this is one of the first that I can find as far as stats wise. Um, there are people that uh, do search for um, you know certain things to uh, you know on YouTube. Right. And so the algorithm will push out results and things like that. Um, and so there were a couple of uh, search terms here, like Daniel Castillo, uh, Heritage uh, Beer or Heritage Craft. Sorry, Heritage Craft. And mm. um, um, what was this? Oh, suggested. Oh, these are coming from suggested videos. I see. So people are watching a video right from someone else and then when that video ends then it comes up with like related videos mm -hmm. so that's what this is coming from so wow. um so for example yeah this first one was uh, a video from kevin's barbecue joints which we've mentioned from time to time so there is a video when they were talking about their oceanside location so when that video wrapped up this was a related video that came up um mm -hmm. the other mm -hmm. one apparently was actually from a um, a video about Leroy and Lewis, which we, you know, oh, we, we talked oh. about from our Texas trip, but yeah. like, I don't think, I don't think that was related to that. It just, um, they certain they found they were watching this video and then it served up, uh, the heritage video. And then they looked at that, I guess. I, that's what I'm thinking. So that was pretty good. All right. So at number two is in fact, Bart's barbecue. 
So number two <laughs> is that uh, uh, is that too low? <laughs> yeah, I could have sworn it'd be number one. Oh man, but okay. Actually, so. it was pretty high. It was definitely pretty high. Um, and this one again, this comes to about two thirds of the episode, and this episode was really long. It's one of I think our longest yeah. episodes, over two hours. Um, and so over an hour and a half of uh, t- of that video is being watched, which is crazy. Um, which is pretty good. I awesome. Know. So, um, we did get distracted on that one with the big ass burgers he was doing. <laughs> oh yeah, I know exactly. Um, that was a good, that was a good one. Um, but the smoke, episode. smoke and smoke meats. But yeah, <laughs> so that's, uh, number two. So at, uh, number one to round this out, um, is in fact, uh, our taco chronicles episode. Oh, wow. So I imagine that a lot of people are searching for Taco Chronicles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like tacos in LA, you know, that sort of yeah. thing. And um, yeah, that uh, that's what brought this up. So this has, you know, among all of them, it's not a big margin, you know, per se, but like it is technically like it has the most views of everyone. And um, yeah, uh, again, about two thirds of this episode of the runtime of this episode was listened to. So that was pretty good. Um, oh. but yeah, Taco Chronicles in LA ranks at, uh, number one for the YouTube. So okay. again, as, as safely as we said, we, we suspected, you know, there is definitely some overlap, you know, of these episodes, but it was interesting to see the difference in, um, you know, in viewer and listenership, you know, in the rankings, how they stacked up again, naturally YouTube is going to get a lot more cause we, mm-hmm. I think we shared that, um, more often, uh, than the audio version, but I, I hope that, uh, we can get more people, um, on the audio side as well, but you know, whatever in time, whatever, whatever One happens is time. fine. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, that was cool. I thought that was pretty good. Um, a good kind of eye opener and to see where we're at. Um, you have any thoughts like from those from either of those sides? Um, I know you thought that Bart's was going to be like number one, numero uno, but didn't quite get there. It was really close. Did. It was close, did. but um, huh. not quite there. But we'll maybe we'll I don't know. We'll have to see. Maybe we'll have to do uh, we have to do another one on them or <laughs> I don't know about that one. Yeah, I don't know true. what else there can be that can be said. Um, but as far as what's ahead. Uh, I don't know. We, we started this, um, because I wanted to, uh, drone on with my chow to talk about these places that we visited. And I wanted to share again, like the experiences and, and, um, kind of the stories that I've had in, you know, um, trying out such great food in LA and showing that LA has, you know, can showcase wonderful types of food, even, uh, in, places you might not expect in ways you may not expect. Um, but that makes it kind of characteristically, um, LA and kind of special in that way. So I don't know. I I hope I'm wondering, you know, it started off. I made this huge list listing every place I've Mm -hmm. technically eaten at. I, and which kind of went off, like what, what places did I take pictures at and whatever, but it was a long list, but there was definitely only certainly a handful that I could like really talk about at length. Like we've seen with these episodes, um, and so I'm thinking that there might still be a few, there's definitely two I have in mind that I, I probably been dragging my feet on, but I probably need mm-hmm. to get to eventually. But, um, as far as the actual f- other format, otherwise, I don't know. I mean, we have these episodes now that we, we have Jamie and Kat and, you know, maybe even John and Daniel coming on things like that. Right. Other, other guests and hosts and whatever that. Um, probably have to change the format a little bit and kind of see how we, um, what kind of stories we get to tell and, um, and share. Um, it's probably just going to be more casual conversation, definitely revolving around food, but also about, you know, life and, you know, what we're up to and stuff like that, but definitely very food, um, focused. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Um, again, more stories more guests. I got, I got to think, I mean, I'm just thinking just off the top of my head. Um, and I'm just putting it out there. Um, just calling out, uh, David from Goldline or best of, uh, L, you know, LA food and, uh, 
got to get them on here or something or mm-hmm. um, things like that. It's just, I don't know. I, I don't know if I should be putting this out there, but I just, you know, I just wanted to share like, you know, I would love to get people out here. I'd love to talk mm-hmm. to like even some of these people, you know, the places from these pop-ups that we've talked. I just, I'd love to talk to them and, um, you know, uh, maybe not necessarily in a formal way, not in a, you know, formal like interview kind of thing, but just like something like we're doing right now. We're just like talking and, you know, getting, and we can get background from them and like, you know, what they're up to and how they kind of came up. But I don't know. Uh, I feel, you know, we need to, maybe we need to kind of grow this a little more if that's the case. Maybe we create, we create more only of our only fans, right? Um, a greater base, if you will. Um, yeah. The more only fans we have, the more we can keep doing what we're doing. Exactly. So I don't know. Uh, so that's what I'm thinking too. And um, maybe we, you know, I know Jamie and Kat, they love when we go out and do stuff, uh, try out stuff on location. And I don't know if there's a way, the way that I can kind of format it in a way that we can put that in here. Um, I don't know to do stuff more on location and talk about things, get real time reactions and um, everyone should just bring their own voice recorder. Maybe that's an idea. I guess so. And then we'll just like compile it here or something and react to the reactions. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Like I said earlier, I do want more to talk more about uh, these places we went with Patrick. Um, There are a lot of places that I'm reminded of and, and places I do want to revisit and, um, and I think, you know, if I know you're, you're a busy guy and, you know, we're busy too, we got, we got, you know, the things we got going on, but I would like to set aside a time where we can do a little kind of, uh, you know, a little tour together and just revisit a lot of these, mm-hmm. these places. Um, yeah. even if it's like a couple, you know, to start and, and just, yeah, kind of remember those, but I don't know. Well, that's just something else. Um, those Patty's picks kind of things, it's kind of nice. I'd like to compile those as well eventually and just mm. kind of go through those, but, okay. but I don't know, is this the end or is this the beginning or, I mean, is this, the... <laughs> I'm not quite sure, you know, um, where we're at with this. I mean, I'd like to keep going and just when we can, you know, there's no, it's not really a high stakes, high pressure kind of thing. I'm just glad that you're here along for the ride for however long it is. Um, but you know, we'll just keep, uh, for now we just keep it up when we can. We just keep, uh, chatting. We just keep eating. We just keep, I don't know, keeping up, I guess, you know, can't argue with that. Um, but you know, uh, thank you, my child. And thank you everyone really for, um, sticking with us so far. I don't know again what the future holds, but hopefully, um, it's something that is, delicious and something that you'll continue to um we can share uh, more adventures together so it should be good but with that said we've come to the end of another episode thank you again for joining us we're excited to bring you more of our adventures with good food and good people you can reach out here on instagram i'm at dumb and hungry he's at my underscore chow you can email us at hi at dumb and where you can send us your feedback and your love letters You can find the videos here on YouTube, won't you like and subscribe and smash? And you can also find the audio here on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever else fine podcasts are served. But until next time, I'm Angelo. And I'm Macho. And on your next food adventure, remember to try one of each.